Hello everyone, I am Ariana from Where Black Sheep Meet and this is my first video in Texas. Long story short, we moved from Germany to Texas and right now we're in the middle of waiting for our home to be built. So we're in a temporary home right now. So that's why I have nothing in my background and I'm actually recording in our dining area in this house. But for now, I was able to get this video together, being that I have nothing right now till all of our furniture and stuff comes in. So since I have been back in the States, I have been very excited to get into all of the craft stores again and go shopping at Joann's because it's my favorite place. Uh, also Hobby Lobby has some great stuff that I've been meaning to go check out. I haven't been to Michael's yet, but also the hardware stores I've been meaning to get a little walk around in as well because you can find some really great uh, craft supplies and stuff from the hardware stores. So today I have a giant craft haul for you. Okay, not too giant, but it is a good size amount of stuff. If anything, I have more sewing patterns because I have been waiting to stock up on that $1.99 sales that they have at Joann's and Hobby Lobby. So I just wanted to go through everything that I've got recently. I have a few things for crafts that I want to do in the future, as well as I'm trying to do more sooner than later. And like I said, I just like to hoard all of my sewing patterns. So in case I decide to make something one day, I have a pattern that might actually be what I need in my stash already. So let's go ahead and get started because I do have quite a few things to show you guys today. So I guess the first thing that I want to show you guys is that I picked up a planner and I love the happy planners. I always have one around. I don't always write in it, but I do try to, and it does help me when I can see the whole month spread out in front of me to know what needs to be done or appointments and stuff like that. So I decided to finally pick one up because I do still have one good for 2020, but by the time our stuff gets here, it'll be, the year will be done with. So I definitely needed to pick up a new one. So I picked up this one and it says, count your lucky stars. And I thought that was really cute. They had another one that said like, follow your dreams or something like that. And I like that too, but the color scheme wasn't as nice. I like the, um, the ombre colors going down the spine and then there we go I took off the um, plastic sleeve holding it together but you can see the different um, artworks and color schemes in each one August so these are already passed but but I definitely like to put in my like filming I like days and it kind of, even though I don't always stick to it, it does help me keep staying more on track than normal. So I really like these um, happy planners. I haven't tried the Erin Condren planner because um, I think these are fine. And now you can get them at all the craft stores and they usually have sales. Like this was 40% off at Hobby Lobby. I'm really happy with these. I like the setup and everything. So I definitely wanted to pick it up, like I said, to start kind of getting organized for the new year because now since I've had such a long little break here with not having all my craft stuff, I want to get right into it with crafting once our stuff does get here and I'm able to unpack everything. So I want to put all my ideas and my plans in here so I'm ready to go when the time comes. Uh, another thing I bought, and uh, I guess we'll go through Hobby Lobby stuff for the moment. I did buy a scroll frame and I've already opened it and put it together because I wanted to put this on my cross stitch, but as a newbie, turns out you can't use this when your project is bigger than the size. This one is a six by 12 and it just didn't work because there was too much fabric everywhere. So I was hoping I can use this because I really wanted another method than my Q snap to make it nice and tight on the frame because sometimes when I'm stitching on my Q snap, it starts to loosen up a little bit. So I have to keep tightening uh, throughout my stitching and I like it nice and tight. So. This didn't work, I would have to buy a bigger one. But I will still keep this and I'm sure I'll be able to use it at one point in the future. Uh, I'll just put it away in my storage stuff for now. But this is the Q frame I got. 
This was also from, like I said, Hobby Lobby as well. I also did pick up two felt uh, squares for my cross stitch as well. So I'm hoping to put this on my key snap where it connects so it protects the um, fabric and the pattern underneath. So I did pick up two of these while I was there just to have it on hand for when I do uh, want to utilize this. For now, it's okay, but pretty soon I will be moving my project over and some of my stitching will now be under the key snap. So I wanted to have this on hand for when I'm ready to move it over so it'll be protected and everything like that. So of course, you know, you can get these at all your craft stores in different colors. So I just picked up two white ones just in case because you can always use felt. So I was really excited to see that in the craft stores, they do have cross stitch fabric. And it was really cool to see all the different sizes as well as the different counts. I decided to pick up one just in case I decide to start another project sooner than later. I went to Hobby Lobby and they had the really, really big ones, the ones that are a yard long. So I picked up the, this one's really big, sorry, it's kind of thin. It's a 22 count Zweigart in white, and it's 30 inches by 36 inches. So this is a yard long, like there. So now you guys can see it's a really big size. So I can use this to make more than one project, depending how big my next project will be. But it was such a good price, it was only $14.99. So I wanted to pick one up just to have on hand in case I get any ideas that I want to just jump into something. And I also wanted to try maybe dyeing the fabric. So I didn't get any dye it because I don't know what color I want to dye it yet, depending on what project I want to do. So I might try dyeing it into a different color, but we'll see. For now, I just have it on hand. Like I said, another, just another thing to add to my stash for now. So since I have been doing my diamond painting in my live streams, I wanted to pick up some little labels so that I can label my uh, little baggies better. I was writing on the little plastic uh, bags and the Sharpie was coming off if I rubbed it enough. So I decided to pick up some stickers. And so I grabbed a little tiny pack of these because I already have a big uh, count of them um, from Amazon that I picked up from beforehand. That's on my stuff. So I just needed a little bit for now to get me by. So something really exciting that goes along with my diamond painting stuff I did not realize they have a Harbor Freight here. And if you do diamond painting, you know some of the most coveted storage containers for your drills would be the Elizabeth Ward, which I like to use, I already have those, but also the Harbor Freight containers, which are these. And you can only get these in the States, from what I understand, you can't buy them online. So if you live in the States and you have Harbor Freight, you can definitely pick them up. So when I was driving down to go to Lowe's, I ended up passing a Harbor Freight. So I stopped and sure enough, they had these. They were like $5.99, so they were super cheap. I didn't know they were that cheap, which makes sense why so many people like them. And it comes with 25 little um, boxes in here. So I picked up two of them, being that most uh, my diamond paintings are on the larger side and they usually come with a little under 50 different colors. So I picked up two and I'm going to try these out. So I will transfer the drills from my diamond painting that I'm doing right now from Diamond Art Club, the My Garden Needs Tending by Mandy Manzano. So I'm going to transfer all my drills into these and I'm going to try these out. And so I'm glad I have my little labels just in case but I will let you guys know how I like these uh, once I start using them. But I was really excited to finally get my hands on these because I know people go crazy for them from what I've heard. So I guess at this point, I'll go in order of the projects I'm trying to put together and I'll group these things together in the project group that I'm using them for. So the first thing is another really exciting thing that I've been wanting to get my hands on and that is EVA foam. I'm sorry if there's like dirt already and like fur, but I have a giant piece of EVA foam and this one I got at Joann's and it's the uh, Yaya Han uh, brand that she came out with. They only had this one size, which is the two millimeter thickness. They have a 
0.5 and a 0.10, I believe. And I was going to look for the 0.5 because I thought that was going to be perfect, but they didn't have any. So I went with the two and I think the two should be fine for what I need in the meantime, but I'll keep an eye out for the thicker size or I'll just order it off of Amazon. But I figured this would be a great way to test it out and like play around with it a little bit. And so it's a really big piece too. This is a 24 inches by 40 inch piece. So definitely lots of projects from this, hopefully. But I definitely want to do more um, of those kind of like sculpting and like molding uh, foam and stuff for um, some really cool projects I want to try. So what goes in hand with that is this heat gun. So I know you need to apply heat to help the EVA foam kind of mold and stuff like that. So I ended up getting this at the Harbor Freight as well. And it was $14.99, I think. Uh, on sale. So I was like, well, I can't beat that just to try it out. If later on down the line, I need a better one, then I'll get a better one. But for now, I think this should be fine. Um, I'm sure it's just the basic one. I don't need to get all fancy right now if I'm just starting out like trying things. So I picked this one up while I was there because it was like perfectly on the shelf, like right in front of me when I walked in. So it was a sign to pick one up. I also did pick up a glue gun when I was at Joann's? Yes, because they had the 60% off coupons. So I took advantage of the huge sale of that. And I picked one up. I do already have a hot glue gun, but just in case I decide to start a craft after all, and I might need this, I will have this on hand because you can make a lot of things with hot glue guns anyways. So it's always good to have one in your stash, whether you're a beginner or advanced because these things come in really handy. The next thing I have actually came from my father-in-law. He is a general contractor. So every now and then he comes across some really cool things like furniture that the homeowners are throwing out or leftover building supplies that are in the trash or for this instance, uh, broken chandeliers. So he was taking off all the crystals and pendants off of it when I had called him the other day and I was saying that's perfect because I had just found a craft that utilized the chandelier crystals and pendants. So he sent me over a few so I can play with and used for this next craft. So to show you, here is some. Some of them are really big. This one's really pretty. It's got the flat back here. And I also have a larger teardrop shaped one. He sent me a round one and then a smaller teardrop. And then he did send me a couple of the smaller ones that are on there. So I can also try and use these for my project as well. So I'm really excited to get into these and it's supposed to be a really easy craft. So hopefully I'll have that video up in the next couple weeks. Um, everything else I bought for it, I will show you now. I went to Walmart and in their craft section, I picked up some wire. So this is gonna require a little bit of not beading necessarily, but kind of like jewelry making in a sense but I did pick up a couple different um, floral wires. And then this one is a 20 gauge and the 18 gauge. And they were really inexpensive as you can see. Then I went to both Hobby Lobby and Joann's and I looked at their beads cause I'm gonna need different kinds of beads for this project. So I did pick up uh, a few of these strung beads. So I have this one really pretty. As you can see, I'm kind of going for like a little bit of a steampunky kind of look. So lots of blacks. I got some more to match the teardrops. Some gold or not a gold. It's like a, not a copper either. <laughs> like an amber. There you go. I got some metallic ones, really, really cute. Those ones, I like those a lot. I got some gold and black ones. And then I got a little pack of black um, straight seed beads. Are they seed beads? Yeah, seed beads. So that's all gonna be part of one project. And then since, like I said, I don't have some of the stuff that I already have, 
I picked up a little kit of pliers to help myself work with the wire a little better. So it comes with the round nose pliers, the needle pliers, and the cutters. So just a basic kit. I think this was $10 at Walmart, something like that. So this is all gonna be for one project. So hopefully I can get that one done, like I said, in a couple weeks. And then I did pick up a little pack of E6000, uh, just in case I might need it and the hot glue isn't doing what I needed to do. And this will also be for a future project that I have in mind as well, that will go with the EVA foam. So I do have this and I like this one cause it looks like it comes with the little, uh, like tips, like finer tips. So that was a cool little pack to grab. So at Hobby Lobby right now, they're having all their big Christmas stuff everywhere. And they do have a really big Christmas craft uh, sections. So I was browsing through, just kind of looking and see what they had. And I picked up these really large uh, bells. And I love this color because like I said, my Christmas decorations and decor is steampunk. So I have my tree and I have my wreath now. I have a video I'll link somewhere so you can see the video for that. But I don't have enough other decor pieces for my home. So I thought these would be great to kind of play around with to make something if I have time this year. If not, I will do it next year, but at least I'll have them uh, just in case when inspiration hits and I can pull these out. So I picked up this. And then also, as I was browsing through, they had these little tiny top hats. And they're for you to decorate for the most part. They're supposed to be ornaments. And I thought these were so cute. So I did pick up quite a few of these so I can do different uh, designs on them. But I thought this would be great for steampunk decorating as well. So I thought these were perfect. So I picked up about four of these and they even had these black ones. It's hard to see in the package there, but they did have these little black ones as well. So I picked up two of these just in case I decided to use these ones as well or in general. So I thought those were perfect. So I picked up some of these and they were 50% off. Hobby Lobby always has their big sales on Christmas stuff and, and it will go down as Christmas gets closer, of course, but who knows how long these things are gonna be around till they sell out. So the last thing I picked up before we get into all the sewing patterns is I got this mannequin head, and this is gonna go with the EVA foam as well. So the idea is to make a large like headdress sort of thing, and I wanna make a couple different kinds so I need something that I can put this on besides myself. So when I'm working on it, like gluing stuff on, I have a base and not my own hair. So I did pick up one of these as well from Hobby Lobby. And yeah, it's just a basic foam head. So as much as this is gonna freak me out seeing it in wherever I store it, uh, I think it was now needed. And I do wanna get into wigs at one point too, to start adding wigs into my costuming, but uh, I think that'll be a little later down the line. So this will definitely get some use in the near future, hopefully. All right, so I think I will change camera angles so you get a better look at the different sewing patterns up close and personal. Okay, so most of these are going to be either Simplicity or McCall, just because those are the two bigger sales that I've happened to be able to get to. Uh, in the last couple months. So this wasn't in one trip, uh, this was in a couple trips. So I picked them up last month and then I also picked some up this month. So first I have the McCall 7910 and I thought this was a really cool little jumpsuit to have. I wanted the really low neckline. I think uh, I wanna try something uh, with a lower neckline like that and put something in the center because I'm more modest than this. And then I also like this higher neckline here. It kind of reminds me of like uh, Serenity from Sailor Moon, her dress. So I think that would be a good base for that. So I don't know if I'll make that, but I think it would be good to have this on hand either way. Then I have the McCall 7513. And I just really love this pleating that they have in the back here. And I really like this back belt. Uh, I have a picture on Pinterest that kind of has a similar look to the jacket. 
and it looked really cool. So I wanna try making something like that with this. So I picked this one up. This is McCall's 7846, and it's got a different poncho alternatives. I don't have anything like this in my stash, so I thought it would be something cool to pick up since I'm trying to do uh, sort of like maybe a hoodie or like, um, like Lord of the Rings, how they had those uh, little capes that they wore. I think uh, this might help or do something like that similarly. So that's why I picked this one. And then the McCall's 3033, which is also another variation of the ponchos. And I think I wanna use this one to do like a hoodie with like animal ears or something like that, like a little bit of a cosplay. And then also a bolero. I've seen some really cool uh, boleros recently as well. So I thought this would be a great one since it's got both included in it already. Then I have the McCall's 7999. And I really love the high neck. Like I said, I don't know what it is with high necks right now, but it's something I wanna play around with. And my ideas right now to go along with the headdresses is to do like a very elegant, regal, fantasy queen kind of thing. So I don't know if I would use this one particularly, but I'm thinking of doing big like headdress and accessories and a simple dress. So that's why I picked this one, just in case I decide to go with something similar to this sort of look. I have the McCall 7569. And once again, this goes along with what I was just saying about the whole queen sort of costume. I wanted something very regal in a dress. So I picked up this one because I like the lines of the dress here, as well as like, it's got that lower neckline here and the high one as well. So I don't know. It's just a way of getting variety and um, mix and matching as well. This is the McCall's 8129, and I had to pick this up because it's got the fifth element. It's got Lilu's uh, outfit here, and she is my, my, well, she's not my favorite, but that movie is my all-time favorite movie. So when I saw this, I just had to have it just because it had that costume on here. But I mean, it's still got some really cool aspects as far as the suspenders. And I mean, you have your leggings and you have the like booty shorts that you can put under any costume or anything like that. So it's still a good pattern to have, but I definitely picked it up more just because it's got Lilu's costume on it. I picked up the... 8110 and this one once again it's just another different type of bigger kind of dress it's got that high neckline again and i liked her really edgy look with it so it seems really easy to put together with the different layers and everything so i grabbed this one as another just in case the 7047 is this right here that I'm really interested in. Like I said, it's going along with that big regal dress that's very form-fitted. Uh, this neckline, probably not, but it's got this separate bottom that I can mix match with other uh, pieces. So that's why I picked this one up for essentially the dress or skirt part. I also have the 7683, and this is another great variation of a big uh, dress and um, skirt that's very simple as well. So lots of accessories that I can add with a simple dress. So we'll see if which one I go with in the end. I have the 7854 and this one is great because it's obviously Game of Thrones and I don't have any of the Game of Thrones patterns. And obviously this is Queen of Dragons and she had some super beautiful costumes in the show. So I knew some of these lines are very unique. So I picked these up because you probably wouldn't be able to find something like this um, otherwise um, with so many components that are different. So I had to pick this one up once I moved back here. This is a 7965. And once again, I might actually use this one too for my queen dress, but this is definitely another great dress. Uh, I believe it's from Highlander, which I started watching. I have not continued it yet. I've only seen a couple episodes, but I've seen a lot of the patterns from that show and they're stunning. So I picked this up because it's such a great base in the dress itself. The last McCall's I picked up at this time is the 7184. And this one has that really high under bust skirt. 
And that's great for Lolita. There's a lot of Lolita dresses that have this under bust sort of thing. And I've been waiting for forever to find a dress that just has a simple under bust look to it. So I was really excited to finally get this one. Moving on to Simplicity, I have the Simplicity 8837. And this one is specifically for this collar. If you have not seen my Atelier Boz uh, Lolita dress, that one I kind of winged it as far as the collar and made my own pattern. But this is the collar that I was trying to achieve for the most part, maybe a tiny bit longer, but this is a great base to start with if you're trying to do that collar yourself. I did insert my own pattern so that you guys can download it and print it out yourself. But this is great because now you have the different sizes that will hopefully match your neck size. So I've specifically picked it up for the collar, but the sleeves are really great. I mean, it's a great shirt overall. So who knows, I may end up using the whole thing eventually, but this is a good one. Definitely very gothic. This would make a really gothic, uh, a really great gothic uh, shirt. So maybe in the future I might do that as an idea, a very gothic uh, alternative outfit. I grabbed the 9086 and it's this uh, coat pretty much, but I love the steampunky, piratey sailor uh, bars here that it has on it. Very uh, circus ringleader as well. and. I think that's a really great uh, thing to have on hand in my stash. And then it also has the little belt things on the side. So that's a really great feature. So now I have a pattern for those as well. The collar is really interesting um, that I might use eventually. So I was happy to grab this one. I have the 9090 and this once again is a very big dress, but it is a Renaissance style dress. So it is a dream of mine to make a Renaissance style dress at some point. So I've been looking for a base for that lately. And this one's a really good one. It's got the nice sleeves and then the big dress and it's got the undershirt. So I do have another one that I'll show in a minute. Uh, and there are a couple more I still want to pick up as well before I decide on which one I want to do. But Renaissance dresses are so beautiful and they're so intricate. I hope that I can get one up for you guys one year so you guys can have something to make your own for those big Renaissance fairs that go on, which are really cool. I did grab the 8722 and it's just a jumpsuit and I believe it comes with a hoodie on this one. And I do have the cosplay by McCall's one. I forget the name of that. I mean, jumpsuits are pretty cool. So I don't think it's bad to not have more than one jumpsuit pattern because I'm sure they're a little different from each other. One might be closer to what you want than the other. So I have both. Like I said, I like variety. The Simplicity 8768 is another Game of Thrones. And this one's got like Cersei's sort of style as well as Danny's dress as well here in the back. So this was another great one to pick up. The dress itself is gorgeous. This is a great base dress. I think this one too is a good one for a queen in general, but I can definitely spice it up with a bigger headpiece or more jewelry or things like that if I use a very basic fabric. So this one might be a contender as well. I have the 8578 and this is a very Marie Antoinette sort of dress, especially with these ruffles here. This is what I'm trying to achieve on mine. So I'm glad I have this now so I can use it as a reference or even this from the pattern itself. And then it's got the cool ruffles on the skirt. So I can kind of mix and match with the other pattern I was planning to use and uh, try to do a little bit of each. It will not be historically accurate. I'll put that out there right now. I just, I'm gonna make it how I want it to be and whatever I think is gonna be beautiful. So I'm happy to have this one to utilize as well. Here's the other Renaissance pattern I picked up, 3809. And this one's a little different of a style. I don't know much about the historical wise of these dresses, but I know they're from different time periods slightly. Uh, either way, like I will hope to make maybe this one too, and that way you'll have different kinds of dresses that you maybe can make for your Renaissance fair or just in general, whatever you wanna do. So this is a great one. I'm happy to have this as well. This is the 9170 and of course it's Beetlejuice. I love Tim Burton. He is my favorite artist 
And what a great costume like this is. It's got the really cool uh, ruffled shirt from, what is it, the 80s, I think it is. Such a great little suit. So this is a good piece to have in my collection. I don't have anything like it, so I wanted to add this to it. I grabbed the 8695 and it's the different variations of sleeves and I thought what a cool pattern that you can just mix and match with whatever costume and add whatever sleeve you want. And so this is just such a great basics pattern. I know I have one with different collar pieces and I know they have different ones um, for shirts like Victorian shirts that I have and there's a couple more, but this is a great one for sleeves. There is some really great different um, designs here. The last I picked up was the 1997, and I think I really liked the collar on this, and it's a little different from what I've seen as far as like dresses to like tops. Usually this is something different underneath. So to me, this was kind of unique. So I thought this would be a great one to have on hand as well. But that is it guys, that is everything that I've picked up in the last couple months now. And hopefully I can start using some of this stuff and get some more videos and tutorials up for you guys soon. So if you're looking forward to me using any of these sewing patterns or any of these craft pieces that I picked up, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notified when I upload any of my videos as well as when I go live, which I try to do now once a week on Wednesdays if I don't upload a regular video. So I hope to see you guys then, but if not, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.